Welcome to Trigger Warning with your host, Chris Brumbles. Are you tired of the professional liars of fake news and far-left radicals? Are you ready for truth and common sense? The insanity and divisiveness of political correctness and identity politics have no place here. So welcome to Trigger Warning, where free speech is free speech, not racism. There are no participation trophies, so if your mind is weak, grab your binky, head to your safe space, consider this your trigger warning. Good afternoon, Columbia County, and welcome to another edition of Trigger Warning, where we embrace the truth and common sense and reject political correctness, left-wing ideology, anything anti-American, and collectivism, no matter what name it goes by. I tell you, friends, Oregon is really popular right now, and not for really great reasons. People all over the country are in shock at the lack of justice and corruption that goes on in the state. Our bisexual lunatic governor just extended the emergency powers by another 60 days, proclaiming herself an autocrat again. Clear up to the election on November 3rd. Isn't that amazing? What started as 14 days has morphed into over a half a year. Just like anything else that the government does temporarily. This is insanity. Last week, patriots that were fed up with the unbridled destruction in Portland and the unrelenting attacks on the president by the lamestream media and the Portland appointed governor and mayor decided to show up and show just how popular our president is. It has been reported that 3,500 cars, pickups, and trucks, along with 10,200 people rolled into Beirut, Oregon to celebrate with a Trump cruise 2020. Of course, the regular far left radical Marxists decided to impede them, but that didn't work out too well. Later on, one of the Patriot Prayer guys, Jay Danielson, was assassinated in the lawless Sodom and Gomorrah just because the insane coward could. He just walked up to him and shot him for no reason. This is what Portland has become because there has been no accountability to the leftists for years. To make matters worse, Crazy Kate and Ted Wheeler both came out and blamed President Trump for the tragedy that they they created themselves. Isn't that amazing? After over a hundred hundred days of rioting in Portlandia, the police began the police being ordered to stand down, even while they are being spit on, having things thrown at them, lasers blinding them, buildings set on fire, broken wi- windows, people being attacked, property damaged, businesses destroyed, and the police being thrown under the bus. Any time Crazy Kate and Ted Wheeler find it a political advantage. And now a good law-abiding citizen being murdered in the street. Crazy Kate puts her foot down, only to get it stepped on. This chick has had about seven recall attempts, and she is still as arrogant as they come. She obnoxiously attacked our president when he advised her again to call out the National Guard to get the hell town under control, and then came out saying that she was calling on a unified law enforcement to protect free speech and to stop the cycle of violence. Problem is, she is a nut job and doesn't know the difference between free speech and violence. She calls rioting free speech. Unless it's the other side, of course. Burning buildings, breaking windows, and murdering people is not free speech, Kate Brown. And with no accountability to the radical terrorists in Portland and constant tactics to divide the people, I believe Kate and Ted Wheeler are just as guilty, if not more so, for the murder of the good citizen last weekend than the coward that pulled the trigger. So, Crazy Kate, who barely survived another recall, came out saying she was going to unify law enforcement in order to, as she puts it, protect free speech and to stop the cycle of violence. Funny, I don't recall her caring about free speech with Ammon Bundy. She doesn't care about violence either, or she wouldn't have waited for over 100 days to do something about Portland. The writing, like everything else in Kate's life, is all politics. So she said she was going to send the Washington County Sheriff, the Clackamas County Sheriff, and the Gresham Police to help Portland get under control. Check out what Sheriff Craig Roberts of Clackamas County had to say in response. After he said he would not be sending deputies into Portland, he said, and I quote, Had Governor Brown asked me, I would have told her that no amount of resources would stop the cycle of violence, that's her term, that is making Portland unsafe. For that to occur, the, crim- the criminal justice system will need to do their part and actually hold 
offenders accountable, unquote, or end quote. Well, duh. <laughs> Washington County Sheriff and Gresham Police also decided to refuse Catherine's request. Or was it an order? Who knows? Regardless, it is awesome to see her crown get knocked off and hear some common sense for a change. Look, y'all, there is a small minority in Portland who have embraced Marxism and trying to provoke a communist revolution. It's a fact. The only way to take down our country is from within, and this could not even be possible without traitors like Kate Brown. If this was 1776, she would be swinging from a tree by now. This arrogant, duplistic, lying, dividing, manipulating, evil, oppressive scoundrel is trying to steal an election from Donald Trump by any means necessary, and she doesn't care who gets hurt along the way. I feel for the people in Portland, I really do, who are trapped with no way out. I am sure that the people in Portland who are good citizens, and there must be some, are wondering why the hell they pay their taxes. They have seen their city destroyed by a bunch of soy latte drinking, basement dwelling, skateboard riding, participation trophy, and trophy recipient enemies of the state who don't even pay taxes and seem to think that they are entitled to whatever they want with no consequences. They have destroyed the city along with monuments and, and are spreading insanity through all the neighborhoods. I don't blame the ones that want to and probably will leave. I just hope, you know, that they get s something for their houses. Who knows? <laughs> Today I'm asking my patriot friends to stay out of Portland. Let it burn. I know that many of you feel vengeful and angry, angry, but but just let it burn. It's not worth saving with the city council and the mayor that it has. The media will spend, spend anything we do in Portland against our president, and it's, it's a no-win situation to go there. The police, the mayor, the city council, and the rioters are all against you, and there's no justice in Portland. You will not get a fair trial in Portland, even for a clear case of self-defense. My guest today will confirm that. Let's stay out of Portland and spend our time prepping and squaring away our counties because sooner or later these commies will feel so empowered by the lack of accountability in Portland that they will come to you. When they come to us, we need to act in a defensive posture and wait for them to make a mistake, which they will. When they try to destroy our counties, we will show them the wrath that they so assuredly deserve. We will send the survivors to their safe spaces to be tucked in by their mommies. Please stay out of Portlandia. It's not worth it. Be patient. We will win in the end. Well, today on Trigger Warning, I have a good friend of mine who knows all too well the insanity in Portland and the lack of justice. Mike Strickland, a freelance journalist, was attacked several years ago by Black Lives Matter and the thugs Antifa, while he was filming. Mike had been attacked several months earlier and had his arm broken several places by some of the same kind of Marxists who were there that day, maybe even some of them. So Mike was armed for protection to ensure his safety, as he should be. As the coward who outnumbered Mike a bunch were advancing, Mike retreated even though the law in Oregon did not require him to do so. After many warnings for the predators to stop their advancement, and after warning them that he was armed and would defend himself, Mike finally drew his weapon and made them halt. When he got further away, Mike reholstered his def self-defense tool, and then they approached again. Mike was later charged with two crimes and released. I believe it was the day and the next day. I may be wrong, but we'll find that out. When Mike returned. They, f they had found out that he was the journalist who did Laughing at Liberals, and Mike was recharged, this time with 21 crimes. I believe it was 10 or 11 were felonies. I won't give too much away right now, but Mike has been through years of torture and the violation of his rights, and we all need to pay attention to this story because Portland has pretty much set a precedent that in Portland there is no such thing as self-defense and that mob rule rules the day. Perhaps they set a precedence for what is going on today. We will be right back in a minute with Mike Strickland here on Trigger Warning, so stay tuned. Hey folks, Chris here. Are you tired of political correctness and left-wing narratives? You must be because you're listening to Trigger Warning, where we will have none of that. I'm your host, Chris Brumbles, and I have no filter when it comes to truth and common sense. I have a big mouth when it comes to protecting freedom and will never be afraid to use it. So tune in to AM 1600 Kohai every Tuesday at 3 for brand new shows. And if you have to miss one, don't fret. Trigger Warning re rebroadcasts Monday through Friday at 3. 
Politics, constitutional issues, and history are just a few topics that we will conquer on Trigger Warning. So thank you for your support and keep tuning in to Trigger Warning on AM 1600 KOHI. The Second Amendment is the palladium of liberty and protects the first law of nature, the right, you know, the right to defend yourself. Our rights have been under attack for many years now by would-be tyrants who want to control you. That's why I'm asking you to remember to vote yes on Measure 5-278, the Second Amendment Sanctuary Ordinance. Don't listen to the watermelons who are giving mis and disinformation on this county law that will protect your right to keep and bear arms. If you have questions about the say-so, call 503-263-5830 and leave a message with your contact name for Chris Brumbles, your chief petitioner for the say-so for the Columbia County. I will get in contact with you, answer your questions, and even get you a copy of the law if you'd like. So remember to vote yes on Measure 5-278, the say-so. And while you're thinking about it, go to OregonFirearms.org and sign up for the free alerts where you will get the truth about the illegal laws coming out of Salem to, to turn you, the law-abiding citizen, into a felon or a victim of a criminal who aren't affected by these laws. Did you know that using the CDC's own stats, if you don't plan on using a firearm to commit a crime, commit suicide, and aren't a gangbanger, your chances of being shot by a firearm are eight millionth of a percent. That's right, you are far more likely to be struck by lightning. Gun laws are about control. It's time to be better informed about what's going on in Salem, so go to OregonFirearms.org, sign up for the free alerts, and if you feel like donating, it's not required, but it will be put to good use. As, as important as the Second Amendment is, the free speech protections of the First Amendment are just as important. I'm a pr proud contributor to Readout News. Please subscribe to Readout News, where citizen journalists who actually care about accuracy put in the time to do the research and fact check. Don't rely on the fake news of the lamestream media. Sign up to get Readout News. It costs nothing. And if we get enough people interested, Readout News Oregon will be coming soon. Remember, Readout News for real Americans like you. Once again, thank you for listening to Trigger Warning. Let's get back to it right now. And welcome back to Columbia County. We have a friend of mine here today who has been just totally thrown thrown under the bus, under the jail, everything. Say, say Welcome, Mike Strickland. Mike. Can you tell us what happened on the day in Portlandia that changed your life forever? <laughs> hey, uh, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, this happened on uh, July 7th, uh, 2016. Wow. Now, this was uh, a little over four years ago. This was before the riots were commonplace, before violence was commonplace. Mm -hmm. This was back when uh, downtown was actually still somewhat enjoyable. It was still somewhat safe. Um I was down there uh, filming a protest. I had uh, it, it sort of uh, turned to doing uh, political news journalism as my main job uh, after a previous incident, uh, the, the previous year in 2015, mm -hmm. where this uh, self-described documentarian guy, Sky Fitzgerald, uh, was caught lying and manipulating to people in his uh, anti-gun documentary. And uh, when when uh, when he was called out on that, his reaction was to uh, uh, steal two video cameras from me and body slam me onto the pavement. Mm -hmm. So uh, that left me too disabled to uh, go back to my old line of work. So I turned to what was my hobby of video production and uh, you know and political work, and uh, sort of made that into my uh, actual job, my actual career. And so, you know, I'd, I'd film, you know, various political events in the area, whether it be protests in the streets or politicians' town halls or goings on at the state capitol building or county commissioner meetings, city council meetings, um, you know, the goings on at the colleges in the area, uh, specifically uh, Portland Community College and Portland State University. Uh, basically, I'd, I'd, I'd go there and, and, you know, film what these whack job liberals and, and, and when you get into the college, just outright Marxists mm -hmm. are, are saying and doing, and then just post it up on YouTube. And this uh, eventually turned into my full-time job. You know, I was getting commissioned by uh, news websites to do articles. I was, you know, getting hired by international news companies to cover events in the area. Mm -hmm. I was making money off the uh, ad revenue on YouTube. So I go to this protest on uh, July 7th, 2016, 
And I'm just standing there filming. I'm not there arguing with anyone. I'm not there trying to instigate anything. You know, I like a fly on the wall kind of perspective. So I came up on a monopod, and uh, and I catch out of the corner of my eye a bunch of these guys. Now this is before Antifa was household name here. This is you know back when they were still sort of a uh, you know fringe element of sorts, and. Uh, and so I catch out of the corner of my eye a bunch of these guys are making a beeline straight for me. Uh, the only thing I can figure is they don't like me filming what they say and do and showing that to the world at, at public events in public areas. So they're making a beeline straight for me here, and uh, you know they don't like me. Uh, so I happen to catch them out of the corner of my eye, and they're led by a guy. He literally weighs 400 pounds. He's literally twice my size, this gigantic guy. Uh, his name is Benjamin Carenza. Uh, he's been in and out of federal prison three times. He's been in and out of numerous different county jails on a bevy of different charges over the years. I had recently seen him stalking some students at uh, Portland State University, uh, trying to intimidate the uh, pro-Trump students. I had recently seen him, it looked like he was stalking the uh, LGBT folks at the uh, Orlando nightclub shooting vigil. That was a few weeks uh, mm -hmm. be before this had happened. So I knew this guy was, was a very seedy and suspicious individual. And so he's leading the mob straight for me here. And uh, they start encircling me from behind, and this big guy starts pushing and shoving me, screaming, get the out of here, get the out of here, you need to get the out of here. I'm like, hey, man, don't put your hands on me. Don't put your hands on me. And I start backing away. You know, they're yelling at me that I'm a racist or something. This is before everybody and their mother were being accused of being white supremacists. Right. So I'm like, hey, I'm not a racist. Don't put your hands on me. Don't put your hands on me. And I start backing away. You know, obviously, these guys mean trouble. They are there for a confrontation, and I'm not. I'm just there to simply film the event, maybe put together a two-minute package, shop it around to some news companies, uh, you know, maybe post some of it up on my YouTube channel. It would all depend on, you know, what, what would happen throughout the event. So I start backing away, and they start taking steps towards me. Now, I was a legal CHL holder, concealed handgun license. Um, I had had the license for five years. I've been through numerous different firearms trainings, uh, including instruction from a DPSST instructor. Those are the same guys who train and certify the police. Uh, some of them do uh, civilian-based courses in their spare time where they apply a lot of those concepts to the civilian world. So I'm backing away, and, and they're taking steps towards me here. Um, I'm issuing verbal commands for them to leave me alone as per my training. Uh, I flip my monopod upside down. Now, a lot of these guys had uh, their anarchist wax masks with them, these, like big wooden dowels and bamboo sticks and whatnot, which I consider weapons. I've personally seen used as weapons to smash out windows and whatnot. So, you know, I flip my monopod upside down, so I have a, that's sort of my non-lethal option here, and it's something that's equal to their flag staff if they're going to hit me with those or, you know, engage in some other, you know, to combative thing. Now I have a non-lethal option that's at least equal to that sort of thing. So a bunch more people come running into the scene now, and everybody's screaming and yelling at me, and I'm backing away. And uh, it reaches a point where I uh, a little, <laughs> little uh, it messes with my head, you know, going back and thinking about it, and uh, you know, to recapping everything here. Um, so this other guy starts circling around my back. His name is Malcolm Chaddock. I had seen him at several protests over the years. I had seen him causing trouble, committing crimes, you know, doing all sorts of nefarious behavior over the years. Uh, he has a criminal history for, the, you know, a bunch of smaller charges, but things like, you know, lewd behavior, lewd conduct sort of thing. Um, so he starts circling around my back, and he's now coming up towards me from about my 4 or 5 o'clock position here. So now my attention is distracted to my right over that way. And because I have a decent sense of situational awareness, and because, you know, throughout this whole thing, I'm just sort of scanning the uh, horizontal plane here, and trying to assess who's doing what and, you know, who's a threat, who isn't. Uh, I consider almost all of them to be threats at that point. So my attention is distracted to my right, and uh, Ben Carenza, the big dude who started the entire thing, is now running up along my blind side, and I happen to catch him out of the corner of my eye. 
At that point, I used verbal commands. That did not deter them. I used a non-lethal option. That did not deter them. I'm retreating from the scene trying to avoid a conflict. That did not Which deter them. Which you do not have to do, by the way. Correct. But it just seemed like the logical thing to do in that situation. Right. So I, you know, I'd gone down, I checked down through all these different options at my disposal. None of these things worked. So at that moment, I had every reason to believe that these guys, in a mob mentality, who obviously were showing, you know, intentions of, you know, harm towards me, right. I, I had every reason to believe they were about to pummel me into the pavement, rob me of my camera gear, rob me of my computer gear, I had, uh, computer gear in my backpack, and, you know, other camera stuff and whatnot. You know, I'm not going to try. I'm not going to turn my back and try to outrun these guys. Cause I'm weighed down by all this stuff. I've had knee problems in the past. Right. Uh, but a bunch of these guys are, you know, d- bigger than me. They're in, you know, some are in better shape than me. I, I, tr- trying to outrun them is, is going to be futile. Yeah. So I drop. At that moment, I drop. I pull my Glock 27 out right then and there. I level it directly at Benjamin Terenza, and I say, "Everybody needs to get the hell back. Get the hell away from me." Yeah. And I had to swing back around to my right at that point to keep everybody on that side at bay. And then, and then they were start, they had stopped coming at me finally, and they start, started getting back. So I had to swing back around to my left side real quick to once again check on Carenza, the big dude who started it all, and make sure he's at bay. So I was trained to shoot until the threat has been neutralized. Fortunately, in this situation, the act of me drawing was enough force to finally neutralize these threats. And they stopped coming at me. They got back. There were no longer threats at that point. I didn't have to shoot. And I reholstered. I gave a quick thing to a TV camera that had caught some of it because I knew that was going to get plastered all over the news. So I wanted to explain that these guys had surrounded me. They had their flag staffs. They started pushing and shoving me. I was in fear because I didn't want to look like a psycho on the news. <laughs> yeah. So, I, so I, I keep backing away up the block. Uh, some more people, you know, get up in my face, start screaming and yelling at me. Um, another guy comes up and, you know, hits me from behind. And, uh, you, know, I, the, you know, I I get my monopod ready to use towards him. Uh, but But it hadn't reached the level of physical threat that it had at the moment that I drew. So one odd thing about this protest is this was the first one in Portland that I had seen where there were no police anywhere. Now, having covered dozens of these protests over the years, I know that their standard protocol is to start off with a couple rows of cops on bikes, just sort of on the outskirts of these things. They're not rushing in and making arrests or anything. They're just kind of keeping an eye on things. They're trying to get ahead of the march and, you know, to redirect traffic and whatnot. Uh, but no, none of that this time. Not a single uniformed police officer to be seen. I, I was there. I was left to fend for myself. And this is actually contrary to the Portland Police Bureau's uh, directives regarding crowd control for large, unpermitted protests. Mm-hmm. You know, hundreds of people marching through the streets. Not a single cop to be seen. So had right. they been there doing their job, following their own directives, uh, this was Assistant Chief Chris Davis who gave the order for there to be uh, no police presence. Uh, had they been there doing their jobs, I doubt the mob ever would have come after me in the first place. Even if they would have, all I would have had to do was maneuver towards a police line, and they probably would have left me alone. But instead, you know, it, it, I, at least part of the blame has to go to Portland Police here for allowing situations like this to escalate. Right. So, uh, yeah, hey, Mike, I'm going to cut you off right there. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back in about three minutes. Uh, uh, we'll we'll start off with uh, your arrest when we come back. All right. All right. Hey, folks, Chris here. Are you tired of political correctness and left-wing narratives? You must be because you're listening to Trigger Warning, where we will have none of that. I'm your host, Chris Brumbles, and I have no filter when it comes to truth and common sense. I have a big mouth when it comes to protecting freedom and will never be afraid to use it. So tune in to AM1600 Kohai every Tuesday at 3 for brand new shows. And if you have to miss one, don't fret. Trigger warning rebroadcasts Monday through Friday at 3. Politics, constitutional issues, and history are just a few topics that we will conquer on Trigger Warning. So thank you for your support and keep tuning in to Trigger Warning on AM1600 Kohai. 
The Second Amendment is the palladium of liberty and protects the first law of nature, the right, you know, the right to defend yourself. Our rights have been under attack for many years now by would-be tyrants who want to control you. That's why I'm asking you to remember to vote yes on Measure 5-278, the Second Amendment Sanctuary Ordinance. Don't listen to the watermelons who are giving mis and disinformation on this county law that will protect your right to keep and bear arms. If you have questions about the say-so, call 503-263-5830 and leave a message with your contact name for Chris Brumbles, your chief petitioner for the say-so for the Columbia County. I will get in contact with you, answer your questions, and even get you a copy of the law if you'd like. So remember to vote yes on Measure 5-278, the say-so. And while you're thinking about it, go to OregonFirearms.org and sign up for the free alerts where you will get the truth about the illegal laws coming out of Salem to, to turn you, the law-abiding citizen, into a felon or a victim of a criminal who aren't affected by these laws. Did you know that using the CDC's own stats, if you don't plan on using a firearm to commit a crime, commit suicide, and aren't a gangbanger, your chances of being shot by a firearm are eight millionth of a percent. That's right, you are far more likely to be struck by lightning. Gun laws are about control. It's time to be better informed about what's going on in Salem, so go to OregonFirearms.org, sign up for the free alerts, and if you feel like donating, it's not required, but it will be put to good use. As, as important as the Second Amendment is, the free speech protections of the First Amendment are just as important. I'm a pr proud contributor to Readout News. Please subscribe to Readout News, where citizen journalists who actually care about accuracy put in the time to do the research and fact check. Don't rely on the fake news of the lamestream media. Sign up to get Readout News. It costs nothing, and if we get enough people interested, Readout News Oregon will be coming soon. Remember, read out news for real Americans like you. Once again, thank you for listening to Trigger Warning. Let's get back to it right now. Good afternoon, Columbia County. We're back here with Mike Strickland, who has been just destroyed. Well, his life was destroyed for quite a few years, since 2016 when he, got, when he was defending his life in Portland. And the corrupt politicians in Portland decided to make an example of him. So we were we were up to so tell us about what happened when you got charged you originally got charged with two crimes right yeah so um i've been continuing to retreat from the mob a few other people get in my face but it hadn't reached the level of physical threat that it had when i drew so we're finally a couple blocks away from the protest uh, some of these people are still following me still yelling at me including ben carenza the big guy who started it all um and then the police show up on the paddy wagon, and they jump off with their guns drawn on me, screaming and yelling for me to get down on the ground, which I immediately comply with, because I'm not there to get into a shootout with the freaking police. So I try to explain to them, these guys surrounded me, they had their uh, flag staffs with them, you know, they started pushing and shoving me, they, you know, they were attacking me, and I was trying to get away, my actions were in self-defense, I'm a CHL holder, my card is in my wallet, in my, you know, left-hand pocket. Um, you know, you can see the whole incident on my uh, video camera there. The police did not care anything about what I had to say. They slapped the cuffs on me. They, they immediately seized my video, immediately seized my computer gear, threw me in the back of a cruiser. I'm, the rest of that evening, I'm transferred in and out between all sorts of different cruisers and paddy wagons. They booked me in jail. Um, I'm initially booked on two misdemeanor charges of menacing and disorderly conduct. The uh, guys who started the fight are not charged with anything. Uh, they're considered the victims throughout all of this. Uh, so I finally get out of jail at about 4.24 a.m. Uh, on recognizance with orders to show up at 2 p.m. for my arraignment. So um, that morning I uh, secured a representation, secured counsel, and uh, we show up at 2 o'clock for the arraignment. And this uh, deputy DA gal, uh, Kate Molina is her name, mm -hmm. she pulls out this phony police report that I didn't even know existed, uh, followed by this guy named John Slaughter, who I hardly even knew. He actually got in my face screaming and yelling at me at the Orlando Vigil a few weeks beforehand. Um, so if this guy in this police report is claiming that I am sending him threatening race-based text messages and voicemails. Uh, that I have ties to these white supremacist groups, and 
that I drove by his house with my hand in the shape of a gun pointing towards him. Now, I don't even know who this guy is. I don't care who this guy is. Of course, I don't do that sort of thing. Yet, Kate Molina is reading this out loud in front of Judge Bottomley with media there, TV cameras rolling, OPB audio rolling, or the Oregonian is there. All these media sources are there. She's reading this out loud as if it were fact to now justify charging me with felony charges of unlawful use of a weapon uh-huh. and tossing me in jail on a $250,000 bail. Now, keep in million mind, dollars. That's crazy. Yeah, keep in mind, I haven't harmed so much as a fly throughout all this. I was the one harmed. I was the one trying to get away from the altercation. Uh, yeah, I was the one who wasn't there to fight. Right. Yet now I'm being thrown in jail on $250,000 bail on felony charges, while headlines all throughout the media run that night, you know, man who drew a gun on, on peaceful protesters, they're calling them, has tied the uh, r- r- racist, you know, the white supremacist, you know, history of threatening, you know, black people, like, what? <sighs> so, um, fortunately, enough people were up in arms, yourself included, um, you know, we were able to raise enough defense funds. I'm thankful for, you know, guys like you, uh, Kevin Sarah with the Oregon Firearms Federation, mm-hmm. um, you know, Lars Larson, uh, Victoria Taft, you know, all these people, uh, you know, raising the alarm bell about what just happened here. And we were able to raise enough funds to get me bailed out. We were able to raise enough funds to pay for the lawyers and whatnot. So I was in there for about 11 days, um, bailed out. And then they have this grand jury proceeding, which I went and testified at and made my case that, you know, I considered their actions towards me to be unlawful, and my actions were solely in self-defense here. Right. So I eventually get indicted. So what started off as two misdemeanors that that then turned into two misdemeanors and two felonies has now ballooned into 21 counts total. Ten felonies of unlawful use of a weapon, ten misdemeanors of menacing, and one overall charge of disorderly conduct. Uh, and the way I found out I had been indicted was from the Facebook link from Oregon Firearms Federation that linked the Oregonian article. Somehow the Oregonian, the reporters at the Oregonian, because uh, Leslie Bottomley's sister is the newsroom director of the Oregonian, they were able to get uh, info before, before even I got the info that I had been indicted. So that's how I found out about it. Um, so, of course, you know, I'm, I'm freaking out, like, oh, my God. So, so throughout all of this, I'm on what's called pretrial release, which is similar to being on uh, probation or parole, the same people in the same office. Yeah. Uh, keep in mind, I'd never been through any of this before, so I, you know, I didn't know any of these, you know, protocols or, you know, who's what and, you know, what to do. Right. So part of my orders of being on release were that I am to be banned from posting videos on YouTube, banned from going on Twitter, banned from blogging, (laughs) banned from talking to the media, banned from going to political events. I was, I had every First Amendment right you can imagine was essentially stripped from me. I couldn't work. This was my job. They banned me from working. By the way, I want want to remind everybody that the First Amendment is not a gift of government. It's your right. You're born with it. So right. go ahead. Right. And, and that's the case that we were trying to make. So you, you can't do this. Uh, but they didn't care. They imposed that anyway. So had I done any of those things, I would be, I would be thrown back in jail and I would sacrifice $250,000. Mm. Um, the, my first person video, which is the only angle that shows the initial attack from those guys, the, the, so the only thing the news cameras captured was the seven seconds where I had the gun out. So that was the only thing that ran on the news. My first person video was the only angle that captured the initial attack from these guys. Mm-hmm. And not only was that immediately seized by police, yeah. but that was ordered as sealed evidence by Judge Thomas Ryan. Mm. So the public couldn't see it. Oh, I'm going to tell you, I think that you showed tremendous trigger control because when I saw those guys poking, I actually, it's, it's, I seem to recall them poking a pipe at you and smoke actually coming out the end of, a, of one of them. It, it was very chaotic. You had all sorts of people running in and out of the scene, people coming in and out from multiple different right. angles. And here I am in real time. Mm-hmm trying to assess who's what, who's doing what, who, who has, you know, harmful intent, 
right. who doesn't. I'm trying to assess this all in real time from you know 180 degree peripheral as I'm trying to back away. Yeah. What do you think would have happened had you not been armed? I, oh, I, I would have been would have been beaten and robbed. The headline would not have been "Man pulls gun on protesters." The headline would have been "Man beaten and robbed at protest." Or worse, because we saw what happened to Jay Danielson, the Patriot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I, was, I could very well have been killed when you have that many people, yeah. and it turns out some of them were armed with guns themselves. Mm-hmm. As uh, John Slaughter, who is the guy who filed that phony police report. He actually turns out he's one of the ones who organized the mob to come after me that day. Right. Yeah. It's. I mean, do you, do you believe Casey, Crazy Kate and Ted Wheeler have perpetuated these riots that are going on, and and maybe had something to maybe even had something to do with you getting charged with twenty four crimes? I don't know. Well, Ted Wheeler wasn't mayor then. He had just been elected as mayor, but okay. Charlie Hales was still mayor. Uh, Chief Mike Marshman. Uh, this was actually his first large-scale protest in the streets during his time as chief. He had just been appointed as chief a week or two before this. Mm-hmm. Um, he's one of the long line of police chiefs that only last a few months before, you know, some scandal pops up and they resign under pressure. You know, he, he's, he's, you know, he, he's just you know, one of them over the last, you know, right. 20 years. You can just go down the line at these people. Yeah. Um, it was the ones who claim moral superiority over the rest of us, you know. So, um, so I'm uh, eventually put on trial. Uh-huh. Uh, and this is now uh, February of 2017. Uh, the judge ruled that uh, we were to be denied our change of venue motion, <laughs> which, which would be to move the trial to a different area in the state away right. from the Portland media footprint. Uh, and our motion was based largely on the DA's own words when she made all those false claims about me in front of a judge with all the media rolling. In fact, in fact, she knew this. it was such BS that she never brought up that report again. They never tried to charge me with anything from that. They never, you know, tried to, there was no evidence. Mm-hmm. Even in the police report, the, the Asian cop who responded to John Slaughter's report here, John Slaughter's a black dude, if, if that matters, um, even in his police report, he's mentioning how, how there's no evidence. How, how John Slaughter could not produce any of these, you know, text messages or any evidence purporting to, uh, to, to what he's claiming. Right. So the DA's never brought that up again. So uh, it, it, she, she effectively used that to influence and taint the entire jury pool by making these false claims about me. And, and speaking of the jury pool... Wasn't there ceasefire Oregon and Black Lives Matter in the jury pool? pool yeah, yeah. So, so this was why we wanted the change of venue. Right. Because we knew the jury pool was entirely tainted based off of false information perpetrated by the media, originally propagated by DA Kate Molina herself. Uh-huh. Now, this is different from things like the Enron trial or you know, or, uh, the Jeremy Christian thing, mm-hmm. where things being propagated through the media were true about those people. Right. In this case, it was absolutely false about me, mm-hmm. but it was used to influence and taint the jury pool. So the judge actually denied our motion for change of venue. So we were stuck with, with the you know, Portland area jury pool and uh, during what's called voir dire. And again, it, I knew very little of, of all this process until this all happened. Mm-hmm. So uh, we get to this thing, voir dire, and that's where we're you know, asking questions of the jurors and whatnot. You know, almost all of them had heard about it in the media. Almost all of them had made up their minds before even seeing any of the evidence or, you know, what's factual and what's not factual. There were people in the jury pool who had been at several protests before, uh, including ones that I filmed. They were likely in my videos doing, saying and doing stupid things. Uh, one juror was a volunteer for Ceasefire Oregon which is uh, one of the preeminent anti-gun groups in the state, and I have done several right, they're videos the, they're the on them. They're the ones that people like Przanski meet in the back room and write these right. anti-gun laws. Right. So, um, so I've done you know, several investigations into their stuff, you know, several videos into what they do. You know, one of their volunteers was in the jury pool. Yeah. And, of course, she had known about me for several years. She doesn't like me. So we had this entirely tainted jury pool. Um. So Oregon is unique in that the defendant can make the choice to boot the jury and go with a bench trial where the judge is the one who decides guilt or innocence. Right. And so we did that. 
figuring that the judge would be more fair, that the judge understands the laws better, the judge understands the burden of proof that the state needs to make. Mm -hmm. Um, So we felt that the chances would be better with that. That's what I was instructed by my attorneys. Well, we're going to find out that that wasn't the case. We're going to go to a break right now, and we'll be right back with Mike Strick, and we'll talk to we'll talk about some of the courts he's had to attend and where he's going. Hey, folks, Chris here. Are you tired of political correctness and left wing narratives? You must be because you're listening to Trigger Warning, where we will have none of that. I'm your host, Chris Brumbles, and I have no filter when it comes to truth and common sense. I have a big mouth when it comes to protecting freedom, and will never be afraid to use it. So tune in to AM 1600 Kohai every Tuesday at 3 for brand new shows. And if you have to miss one, don't fret. Trigger warning rebroadcasts Monday through Friday at 3. Politics, constitutional issues, and history are just a few topics that we will conquer on Trigger Warning. So thank you for your support and keep tuning in to Trigger Warning on AM 1600 Kohi. The Second Amendment is the palladium of liberty and protects the first law of nature, the right you know, the right to defend yourself. Our rights have been under attack for many years now by would-be tyrants who want to control you. That's why I'm asking you to remember to vote yes on Measure 5-278, the Second Amendment Sanctuary Ordinance. Don't listen to the watermelons who are giving mis- and disinformation on this county law that will protect your right to keep and bear arms. If you have questions about the say-so, call 503-263-5830 and leave a message with your contact name for Chris Brumbles, your chief petitioner for the say-so for the Columbia County. I will get in contact with you, answer your questions, and even get you a copy of the law if you'd like. So remember to vote yes on Measure 5-278, the say-so. And while you're thinking about it, go to OregonFirearms.org and sign up for the free alerts where you will get the truth about the illegal laws coming out of Salem to to turn you, the law-abiding citizen, into a felon or a victim of a criminal who aren't affected by these laws. Did you know that using the CDC's own stats, if you don't plan on using a firearm to commit a crime, commit suicide, and aren't a gangbanger, your chances of being shot by a firearm are eight millionth of a percent. That's right, you are far more likely to be struck by lightning. Gun laws are about control. It's time to be better informed about what's going on in Salem, so go to OregonFirearms.org, sign up for the free alerts, and if you feel like donating, it's not required, but it will be put to good use. As, as important as the Second Amendment is, the free speech protections of the First Amendment are just as important. I'm a pr- proud contributor to Readout News. Please subscribe to Readout News, where citizen journalists who actually care about accuracy put in the time to do the research and fact check. Don't rely on the fake news of the lamestream media. Sign up to get Readout News. It costs nothing, and if we get enough people interested, Readout News Oregon will be coming soon. Remember, Readout News for real Americans like you. Once again, thank you for listening to Trigger Warning. Let's get back to it right now. Good afternoon, Columbia County. We're back with Mike Strickland. We just heard how he got screwed over by the system pretty much, and he's been through a lot of a lot of things with courts. He's been through appeals courts, and he's headed to the Supreme Court of the United States. I, I just thought I'd like to before before we go to that, Mike. I, I wanted to ask you when you when you did have your court in Portland, were you allowed to face your accusers? So that's one of the very interesting things. There's so many due process issues that have come up throughout this case here. Yeah. So I was eventually found guilty of all 21 counts. I. Uh, after about a week of trial. Now, throughout the week of trial, here's just some of the shady things that happened here. Mm-hmm. So they're claiming that there were 10 victims. So when I say 10 counts of unlawful use of a weapon, 10 counts of menacing, they're claiming that for each one of the people who was in my immediate uh, uh, horizontal plane there when I drew. Uh-huh. What's interesting is only two of those people were ever identified, ever came forward, that being Ben Carenza, the big guy who started the whole thing, mm-hmm. and Malcolm Chaddock, the guy who was circling around my back to provide the distraction. So I was denied my right to face eight of these accusers. Uh, they, they also allowed an ambush expert witness to testify after both sides had rested. Uh, his, his name is Ryan Rasmussen. He's a, uh, the firearms trainer for Gresham Police. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's interesting about his testimony is he has no experience in the civilian world. Uh, so uh, all his testimony on, and in training could only be referenced to what a police officer 
would do in the situation that I was in. And he even conceded that, uh, you know, not only police officers are held to a much higher standard than a civilian with a CHL, but he even conceded that some members of the mob were indeed hostile threats towards me and that I was justified in drawing on them. Right. So uh, the judge said I'm guilty of, of all counts. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it, fortunately I was not sentenced to prison. Um, the sentence, for the most part, considering the number of charges, was pretty lenient. Um, I think the judge realized that I'm someone who has you know, no criminal history. I don't even have a speeding ticket on my record. Right. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll spare the, the details from that, but um, I immediately appealed the case because, again, of course my actions were in self-defense. Mm -hmm. We have a bevy of due process errors that happened throughout this. So I retained Robert Barnes, uh, attorney to the stars out of L.A., who has a personal interest in the case. And, uh, you know, we dropped the appeal. We brought up uh, seven or six issues on appeal, um, a lot of which related to my mindset. The previous incident where my arm had been shattered was ruled to be inadmissible. That's my crazy. That's just detective. absolutely insane. Oh, yeah, yeah. My statements to the detective about how, how violent and aggressive the mob were towards me were ruled to be inadmissible. Mm. So of course, the, of course, the prior did, did they, I'm sorry, did, I don't mean to cut you off, but did they explain why, or they just said no? He says it's irrelevant. Does not play into my mindset. So Judge Thomas Ryan <laughs> somehow thinks he's some kind of mind reader and can tell me what I was or was not thinking throughout this. So, so if a woman is being beaten by her husband over and over for 15 years, and then she finally shoots him, that didn't play into her mindset. <laughs> hey, using that same standard, that that's correct. Good lord. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So the appeals court affirmed the ruling after, you know, nearly three years of waiting. They affirmed the ruling, which means they agree with the lower courts. Mm -hmm. that the courts could get away with all this shady stuff they did, mm -hmm. um, yeah, some of which I'm, I just mentioned there. Um, the change of venue, the ambush witness, the things related to mindset, the, you know, the, the accusers not coming forward. The appeals court says that's perfectly fine, perfectly acceptable. So we took it to the state Supreme Court, and they denied to even hear the case. What's interesting is the same state Supreme Court just overturned a rape case based on the knowledge and mindset of the guy who did the rape. Right. Wow. <laughs> They're fighting with rapists over a guy who hasn't run the fly. So now the case is heading to the federal Supreme Court of the United States. And I need help. I've been banned from working for four years. Mm -hmm. I can do, I, the ban has since been lifted. My probation is all over. I've served everything. Um, you know, my arm is, is too busted up to go back to the previous line of work. I got a big old chunk of metal and 13 screws holding my arm together. Good Lord. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't believe it when I saw those x-rays. I, I flipped out. I nearly fainted. <laughs> so, you know, I need help. Yeah. And, you know, th this case has just a convergence of First Amendment elements of does a person have a right to be in a public area filming in a public event, or does a gang of thugs have the right to use force to stop someone from doing that? Uh, along with the, all the First Amendment restrictions that have been placed on me, this has Second Amendment aspects of, you know, th to what extent can you defend yourself? Right. You know, and all these other things, and all these due process errors. Because if they can a do these things to me, they can do it errors. to anyone. A lot of due process errors is a kangaroo court. Yeah, and, and, and that's, why, that's why everybody should be concerned about this ruling in my case. Is this that, could is happen that, to you. This that, could happen to your loved ones. This could happen to your doctor. This could happen to your boss. I'll be honest with you. The, the, as soon as that, you know, as soon as that, that happened to you, Kevin Sterrett and I both went and got insurance <laughs> in case we, I mean, hopefully we never have to shoot anybody but if you, or defend yourself. But if you do, you know, we wanted insurance, and I got $2.5 million worth. Yeah, yeah, because after seeing what to me, I don't blame you. Fred Bastier said that the end of justice is, is or the end of government is justice, and he, and he defined justice as the absence of the plunder of your rights and your property. Well, your rights have been plundered left and right. There is no justice in Oregon. Yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with that. That judge um, that first what, tried what? the judge that first tried your case was was he the judge that wanted to throw all the guns in the ocean or am I confusing him with a different one? You're confusing him with someone else. That was okay. uh, Judge Kenneth Walker. Okay. Uh, okay. My judge was Thomas Ryan. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, I, I need help. You know, if anybody out there wants to help out, I have a fundraising set up. Um, I have a PayPal account, Strickland Legal Fund. 
Bond at gmail.com. Uh, that's how you can reach me, and, uh, and that's what the PayPal account is under. Would, would you repeat um, that one more time, Mike? Uh, Strickland Legal Fund at gmail.com. Strickland Legal Fund at gmail.com, okay. Yeah, that's a, that's the PayPal account there uh, where okay. people can uh, help me out. And uh, Oregon Firearms Federation has a lot of donations again. Right. Uh, leave a little note on the checkout page there that it's for my fund so he knows where to uh, direct the money. Uh, or you can hire me. I do professional video production. I do weddings. I do ads for businesses. I do, you know, do corporate events, uh, all sorts of things. Uh, I like working. I like, I like making money. Um, but, yeah, it, I, I, this, this is going to the Supreme Court. It costs money. Yeah, and a lot that's of money. one thing that I don't have. Yeah, we'll have we'll have Sheriff back on in a couple of weeks, and he actually went to the Supreme Court. We'll we'll talk about that too, but yeah, yeah, guys, if you can help Mike out, Strickland Legal Fund at Gmail, or excuse me, Strickland Legal at Gmail dot com, right? Strickland, Strickland Legal Fund. Legal Fund, okay. Yes, <laughs> and you know, get, getting back to what you were talking about as yeah. far as you know, the, the, you know, the Patriot events and whatnot. Yeah, this event set in motion. The legalization of mob violence in the streets. Right after after this evening, the mob learned that they could get away with attacking whoever they want, and not only face no consequences, but the person they target and attack is the one who gets arrested and thrown in jail. Right. They've incentivized mob violence. They've rewarded mob violence, and since this event, we have seen riots be commonplace all throughout election week, all throughout inauguration week, throughout May Day, all these other things. Yeah. We've seen, you know, what happened to Adam Hayner, the guy who got you know, kicked in the head on the street. Um, you know, uh, Aaron Danielson getting shot in the street. All these things, it all goes back to what happened to me. That was the night that mob violence was legalized on the streets. I, I, I t- totally agree with that. And it, it, is a, it is a sad shape. I, I don't even consider Portland part of America anymore. It's just... So, it used to be a great city. That's what sucks is mm-hmm. I used to love Portland. I worked downtown Portland for 13 years. I used to love the city. I used to love going downtown. It is a third world war zone now. Yes. At the hands of these raised liberals. Well, I'm calling it Beirut, Oregon. But There you go. Mogadishu, Beirut, <laughs> Baghdad, whatever you want to call it. You know, uh, Libya, whatever you want to call it. Did you know Michael Forrest Rhinel? I was just wondering if you knew him in your... No. No, you didn't no. know that guy, the guy that murdered Jay yeah. Danielson? Now people are... Well, 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 what's funny is, is it took them five days to even come up with an arrest warrant for that. Yeah. And your, your probation was a living nightmare, wasn't it? Yeah, again, I'm banned from doing... Or I was banned from doing all those, uh, you know, First Amendment activities. Mm-hmm. Um... Uh, you know, I had to serve uh, 240 hours of community service. They actually had a hard time figuring out how I could do that because yeah. of the condition of my arm. You know, I'm partially disabled, right. so they couldn't put me on the normal work cruise. They had me uh, eventually in this uh, homeless shelter, uh, you know, which, which was all right. You know, most people there were, were cool. I mean, it still sucked. I still had to do 240 hours of it. So it took away from working. It still took away from you know, doing schoolwork. Um, they recommended that I uh, sign back up for classes college, which I did. I enrolled in the uh, uh, film and uh, uh, journalism departments uh, at, at uh, community college. And um, so, uh, yeah, you know, I had to pay uh, $45 a month fees mm-hmm. for just being on probation. I had to meet with these people once a month. I listen to them lecture me about how I should avoid going to, you know, uh, events where people don't like me. They're, they're essentially saying that if, that if I see someone on the street that I don't like, whether they're engaging in First Amendment rights or not, I have the right to use force to prevent them from being in that public area. Right. I'm the bad guy for just showing up holding a video camera. Yeah. I'm the one causing trouble. I'm the one being controversial. The people burning down the city, the ones calling for shooting police officers, the ones looting stores, that's perfectly acceptable according to all these people. Right. So knowing what you know now, would you have done anything different? Um, I don't think you could. And this will be probably the last question, so... Well, if you can't that's answer an unfair, because of court, that's an unfair question, asking knowing what I know now. Yeah. Because at that point in time, I did not think that those actions would be considered unlawful. I thought those actions would fall under the self-defense statutes, as I've been trained through the firearms courses. Right. I considered my actions completely lawful. I considered the mob's actions unlawful. And 
and, and, and they were, and they were I, I, what I did was right. I totally agree with you. If so, we're we've had Mike Strickland on today, and Mike, could you just one more time just give give where they can send funds to help you? And uh, we're going to have to wrap this up today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can go to my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash laughing at liberals. I'm on Twitter at laugh at libs. Uh, you can donate to my defense fund, uh, Strickland Legal Fund at gmail.com on PayPal. Or you can donate through Oregon Firearms Federation. Leave a note in there saying it's for the Strickland Fund so they know where to send it. And uh, thank you for having me on. Thank you for uh, letting me tell my story. Hey, thank you for coming on, and we'll talk to you soon. Uh, God bless, you. man. And, and Thanks, win that case. Guys. Well, folks, there's no doubt we need to take Oregon back from the stranglehold that the far left Max Marxists have on it. And to do, and to do that, we have to create a reckoning in November. We have to take power away from the insane supermajority and get back to the rule of law. Mike Strickland was convicted for defending himself simply because our elected employees are evil and wanted to make an example of him. If Mike would have been a leftist being attacked by the people on the right, the city of Portland would not have even pressed charges, and the governor would have been talking about the poor guy who got attacked by white supremacists, and then she would have blamed President Trump. Enough of the insanity. This is not what America is. In America, everyone is equal under, in the eyes of the law. Of course, Portland is not America, is it? Let everyone get out to vote on November 3rd, and, le and let's take our state back and return to the rule of law where everyone can be safe. I'm neither a Democrat or a Republic, but I'm telling you, the Democrats have been running this state into the ground for over 30 years. It could be 35, I have to check. And we need to change that before we envy Detroit. Let's pass the Second Amendment Preservation Ordinance, Measure 5-278 in November, and fire Brad Witt, who only represents himself, his union boys, and the criminals. Let's get r rid of the Marxists in this county by making sure that we reject reject Brandy the Dudzik, the Dud Dudzik, and replace Alex Tardiff with Casey Garrett. Let's elect, elect Brian Stout as representative that will actually work for the people. And let's make sure to give Columbia County's vote to Donald Trump like we did in the last presidential election. Let's take back our state and country. And while we're at it, let's keep Columbia County sane and normal. God bless, and we'll see you next time on Trigger Warning. You've been listening to Trigger Warning with Chris Brumbles. You can email your comments to kohi.radio at gmail.com. And listen again next time for Trigger Warning with Chris Brumbles.